BASS presentation. Welcome back. Welcome back to Maxim Bassmaster Elite Series event in the sunny state of Florida. And it is sunny today, high in the low 90s. You can tell we are in sunny Florida in April, a different time of year than we're typically here at the St. John's River in Palatka. And I have a different time of year. I got a different guest, Steve Bowman. Appreciate you being here well, with I me. Y'all are y'all are reaching for the bottom of the barrel when the when the Canadian flu hits Mercer and you pull up an Arkansas redneck. It's something that's going on, man. Oh, I don't know about the all world's that. falling apart. <laughs> I don't know so. about all that. But anyway, Dave Mercer was at takeoff this morning, feeling a little under the weather, and I think he's feeling a little more under the weather mm -hmm. right now. We miss him. Hopefully, he gets gets better here real real soon before way in time. Everybody yeah. wants to see Dave Mercer doing that, but but good to have you here. You've been here a whole bunch of times in the past usually earlier than this tell us about what you think about this rookie class and the guy that we got the camera on leading the angler of the year points the rookie of the year points trey mckinney has really been showing out all year and especially here today with a camera on him seeing some schooling fish it's like he goes from one fishery to the other and catches them many many ways Here's Trey McKinney right. moments oh my ago. Gosh. Big and whole sun. Oh my gosh, guys. Oh my gosh. 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 I mean, it's huge. <laughs> oh my gosh. No. He's on. He's still on. He's still on. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, here's good. Woo! Sonny chicken! Ah, yeah, 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 yeah! I was heartbroke. Heartbroke. It got hung. I got my flip flops through the third toe. Oh. Woo! <laughs> hey, yeah, he said he never seen that done before, son. Holy cow, I mean, uh, got hung up in the thing. It's an old shipwreck, and uh, I'm like freaking out. That was crazy, guys. She come up and jump, I'm like, catfish. Because I can't tell you how many catfish I've caught, but you see how big that thing is? I see how big it is, I don't know if y'all, but oh my gosh, that thing is huge. We're going back to weigh-in. We're done. Dude, I, in practice, I seen one, and I was like, what is that? Like, And I caught a catfish, but I still thought it was a bass. And thank the Lord, I thought it was a bass. Woo! Okay. Holy cow. Freaking tank! I'm not even gonna it's weigh it. Way, it's it's so hard. I mean, it's six, oh. maybe seven. I'm yep. saying. <laughs> Post spawn fish is is hard to hard to know for sure. I know it's big enough to uh, move him up the leaderboard right. even more. He's been in the top top ten all day long. But that right, that fish right there will definitely help his smallest fish that I think was less than two pounds. Right. Same glide bait we saw a good bit of last week with Trey McKinney. So let's, this is a great, great time to take a, take a little break and recap what's going on with the Toyota Midday Report. About the Cliff Prince, Prince. The Prince of Palaka. He's, uh, you know, he is historic. The first year we had, we had a tournament here. He, he did really, really well. And then it's always hit just wrong. Yeah. You know, it's, it's just amazing that you come to your your uh, home water and, and you hit hit it the way he has. And I know it's uh, disheartening for him, but that's not what he's going. That's not where he's sticking. Right. right? He right. may be 75th place there, but uh, don't expect that to be the case. Yeah, he's had some slow starts here before and then come back come in a back strong, in a strong way. way. Uh, Lost a few fish today uh, for, for various reasons, but we hope he uh, 
to put a few of those bigger ones in the boat. Now this is the big, to me, Drew Cook is the biggest surprise of, of the leaderboard. You know, he's in 70th there with five pounds, three ounces. But there's a there's a lot there's some of our leaders. Matter of fact, our top two they're catching them off the bed. Yeah. And they're hard, it's hard to beat that kid right there when it when there's sight fishing involved. I, and, I, and I'm blown away that he's he's there. I don't expect him to stay either. No, he'll he'll definitely move up. Uh, but but here's something I learned through the years fishing this river. Number one. Uh, you know it's different when the water flows north. The water flows backwards, but the water level really, really adversely affects these fish on the bed. The tidal situation and the wind blowing. Next, 69th place unofficial. John Cruz with only five pounds, 13 ounces. Right. Don't think we'll see him in that spot he, very yeah, much longer. You know, he won here last time, and uh, the only difference is, is that he won here, and he always does well. You know, we, I think we had to get, catch an 11 pounder a few years ago. So, you yeah. know, it's been, you know, years run closer together for us old people, Davey. But it's been a while, but it, but uh, he always does well. He's won here. The difference between this and the last time he was in Rodman, uh, the last time he won, and that's not Rodman. No, that's definitely not Rodman. A little surprising that he is not in Rodman. Here's someone that is no surprise to everyone that keeps up with tournament bass fishing throughout the country, John Cox. The thing I notice about Cox, every tournament, he always catches them late in the day. It takes his, it takes him, so he never starts off strong, but he just, he figures them out and he dials in, he dials in, he dials in. So 56 for him right now and eight pounds is just a standard start. I have really got excited talking to him this morning. He made a long run. Well, not really as long as it seemed because it was about a three hour run, but only a, between 60 and 70 miles. He had a couple of big ones on the bed that did not work out for him. Here's somebody who's having another good week. Had a good week last week at Harris Shane. All eyes on Rick Clun, his 500th Bassmaster. Unbelievable. Event. And and watched him a little bit this morning. He's in Rodman. And, uh, you know, he's just doing his deal. You, can, you know when Clun runs by you because he's going about 5,000 RPM. So where everybody else is going 58 to 6,000 RPM. And he just kind of does it as it on his own speed and, and uh, obviously makes it happen. And it just blows my mind that he is still uh, not not just a competitor. That's one level of respect, but a legitimate respect for competitor. Yeah, and I uh, had the pleasure of talking to him this morning before takeoff and uh, this 500th event is just as important to him as it was 400 events ago. Oh, I, I promise you, I know it, and and he, he's just great. And then we see this kid, and you asked me before, before we started this about this youth explosion, and uh, um, you know, the childhood enthusiasm, the childlike enthusiasm that some of these guys are bringing is really infectious. Yeah. You got you got to love that. Now a lot of folks are you know they're they're saying old new old young this and that, but the reality of it is is we started um, college bass fishing in 2003. Yeah, you know we only started with six teams. By 2004 we had 36 teams, and then after that it exploded. And then we had high school and we have junior. Justin Hamner won the classic. He is fishing big time tournaments at 13. I was having a conversation with Cliff Prince. He didn't even fish a tournament until he's 27, right. right? I mean, you know, you started at a young age, but so many of these guys uh, of our generation, they didn't start till they were in their 30s. And and now these guys that are 30, they've had, they've got more experience fishing tournaments than, than, you know, the average cat did back in the day. I mean, you know, it's just unreal. The, yeah, the, it, the learning it, curve has gone way down. Yeah, it should not be surprising, knowing the college bass fishing has been around for 20 years, that a 19-year-old right. is doing well on right. the Bassmaster Elite Series because they have had the the training and and they they have had access to a wealth of knowledge that the generations before them did not have. Taking. Taking a look at this, all the way the anglers are spread out, but the guy that's got the hot hand this morning and all year really this leading angler McKinney. of the year is Trey McKinney. Well, guys, that was an unbelievable. I mean, 
we're going back to this morning, I was like trembling. Like I've never had a morning as rough as this morning. I don't know if it was the risk. I don't know if it was not knowing what I was on. I don't really know what it was, but I was freaking out. And I am speechless right now. Because I was like, caught the first five pounder on the spook. I was like, all right, we survived. And we started fishing, we started catching three, a three, a three, a three. I was like, son, we're getting better, you know? And I had a gut feeling to run to this place. Like I was saying, I've caught a ton of catfish in practice off this like, you know, not anything, it's structure oriented. I haven't really caught many bass off like straight up structure, like something metal, a shipwreck or brush pile, something like that. I've never done it. I haven't caught any off of it. And I threw it in practice, practice and I seen one swim off of it, two or three. And I was like, man, them had to be big ones, you know, and it felt right. But then I picked up my glide bait and caught a catfish. I went halfway down the shipwreck, caught another catfish. I was like, kind of writing it off. And for some reason, I don't know why, but on my run back, I just, I, the Lord, I, I don't know, he does amazing things, but he just gave me a gut feeling that I was like, maybe, you know, what's the odds? You know, maybe, maybe you do get one of them to bite. Instead of fishing a school that you know you might catch a three pounder you'll need tomorrow, I was like, let's do that. You know, let's try to catch a fish off something I'm probably not gonna fish tomorrow. And I threw up there and she like, Go. She swallowed it. I mean, it was unreal. I like twitch, 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 and I couldn't see it because it was at 90 feet. And I seen like a, a streak. I was like, and it just like railed it. So it's crazy. I don't know. I thought I lost her, guy. I mean, she hung me up in, a, in that shipwreck, and it's rebar and rusty metal, all sorts of crazy stuff. When she hung me up, I thought it was over, like over, done, forever. And at that point, I wish I never even saw her, but. Maybe some things happen for a reason. I don't know. I, it's, this year's been crazy. I don't understand it. I don't know. I don't know how I'm catching them. Sometimes uh, I, I don't know. It just it's unreal. I, the Lord. I don't know what He's. I always say in His plan, but I mean it's unreal. It's it's crazy this year. It's it's been amazing. You know, I just love it. Going out and finding these fish and like like that. I was idling, you know, and I was just kind of I listened to music all that stuff and I was like maybe I should check it you know just little gut feelings like that you gotta trust little hunches and uh, I'm glad we did it's been unreal I can't I, I'm still mind boggled I don't understand I can't believe it happened like I'm just I'm going back to weigh in now there's no reason for me to hook anything else so we're headed back to the weigh in all these canals and rivers are got a speed limit so it's gonna take a while so might as well play it safe. I'll probably run out of gas here in a little bit and I'll switch tanks. <laughs> so we need to go to one extreme to the other, huh? <laughs> but I'm telling I'm telling you, I mean, I, and I want to talk to you about this as, as I'm watching and listening to Trey McKinney and I'm thinking about Rick Klein. Now, and the reason I'm thinking about that is, 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 and we're going to see Rick Clun now, the reason I'm thinking about that is he was talking about instincts and the instinctual and the gut feelings and, and the getting involved in the game and not understanding why he's really catching them. You've been in that situation where you just, man, it's just every move you make is golden. And this man has done it many times. Uh, I mean, I can't complain. I had, you know, close to 10 keeper bites, and and uh, I figured I got somewhere between 12 and a half and 13 pounds, so I, I'm still looking for a, a good one. I could cull a couple more, and it can happen pretty quick. The fish are, you know, they were schooling a little bit this morning, but these fish here are just, you know, scattered, but there seems to be, there seems to be pretty aggressive, so. I just get around the right one. That's all it's going to take. Not really. Uh, so you just, notice, Rodman. You know, if, 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 if you don't, you don't have out in the open water any high drill or anything. So they just get around this wood. But a lot of them today have actually been not on the wood I can see, but on wood that's, you know, that you really can't see. And, uh, but I've caught a few lately off, just right off the wood too. So, so it just became, 
a game of math now, you know, throwing wood. How many of that, how many pieces can I hit between now and the time I got to head in? Because <laughs> it seems like if they own it, I don't have to finesse them, they, they bite. You talked a little bit about the pressure you felt this morning before takeoff. You, uh, you feeling better now? Well, yeah, because that, that first spot where they kind of were schooling, you know, it gave me four pretty quick and it kind of, I knew I had plenty of time to, you know, get more. So that, that kind of took, you just didn't want to fall on your face, you know, in the mud face down. And uh, I kind of, that happened when I got those quick this morning, it kind of took, took that away. Now I can just concentrate on, you know, how to catch the, maximize the best bag I can today. That last tournament in 2019, I almost lost it because I didn't maximize that first day. I caught 17 and left real quick because the fishing had been tough. And that's a mistake. You got Even if you got 20, you need to move it to 21 and 22 because at the end of the tournament, as often it's just ounces or, or a pound that separates you. So even if you get a good bag, a lot of tournaments are lost. Once you get a good bag and people relax, and if they could have pushed it up another pound or so, you know, they, they would have won. Davey, you may have noticed this, but when they were showing the catches from earlier. That was flat calm. And but the wind has steadily picked up on Robin. I just left Robin uh, and and that changed the bite. Oh, sure. The fish started getting, and so you've seen that. I mean, and I think that that will continue to build it over there. Well, coming into this tournament, Rodman was supposed to be the hot spot, right? And there's 30 boats over there, and they had to fight the lock. They all had to lock together, uh, and and it's it's a big place, but there there's not a there's not a really a lot of big spots. You know, you you just got to roam because it's just like what he's saying. You know, you fishing stuff you can't see uh, a log or stomp a lot of old cypress land down there a lot of lot you know there is no grass very there is some grass but not much uh some lily pads but not as much as you would I think mean, uh, not as much as there's been in years past now. but i mean so the wind is is steadily inching up and that that's going to change grass, everybody's game even so basically you've had to kind of relocate what the fish are doing and what they're using currently and uh you know, I've, uh, I, so that's all I did the two days of practice we had. I kept looking for water that, you know, I felt like I could catch some good ones in, and yet it would last several days. But I, 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 all too often, my best tournaments historically have been on water that I didn't have a lot of extra baggage. I didn't, I wasn't carrying past history with me, so it, I didn't take a whole day of practice to get that history out of my system. I just started trying to develop what's currently going on. Good, I was just thinking, uh, he's fishing nowhere near where he won those two in, events in here uh, just a few years ago. And he just answered my question. You know, it 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 only took him uh, not even a whole day to eliminate that area. It's just not it's just not happening there. It's not playing. I talked to John Cox this morning before takeoff, and he was talking about how good Rodman looks. Right. That uh, oh, short eel, short eel grass. The water's good. Vegetation's good. Not not overwhelming right. like. Uh, sometimes a hydrilla, I've seen it there where it you know, really mats out by this time of the year. And there is some hydrilla mats there. Yeah, but but not Not expansive. like what it like past, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So it's just, I mean, you know, it's it, and, and there are a lot of guys that were attracted to that. Uh, yeah. But there's a ton of hardcover. Ton, ton of hardcover. And here's, uh, speaking of hardcover, how about a hard rookie to to top this year so far he said uh trey mckinney 21 pounds six ounces said man everything's just kind of been crazy this year well there's 102 other anglers that think he's been crazy this year Corey johnson not too far behind saw him and chris debut their bassmaster elite series of 
career right here on the St. Johns River. Caleb Summerall, Mark Menendez, Wes Logan. We'll be right back. Maximum Bassmaster Elite on the St. Johns River. Discover the Dakota Lithium DL Plus 135 amp hour battery. With dual purpose 135 amp hour deep cycle capacity and an impressive 1000 cold cranking amps, this innovative battery is equipped with even heat technology, allowing charging even in temperatures below 32 Fahrenheit and boasts power gauge Bluetooth connectivity for real time monitoring. Dakota Lithium, engineered to power your passion from bow to stern. The best of the best. just got better. Clear images, sharper resolution, improved target separation. That's right, better. LiveScope Plus, only from Garmin. Hunger is contagious with bass. Playing off a of fish's instincts, the HydroWave incorporates recorded sound vibrations that a fish would naturally hear or feel, provoking them to act. Look at that. Look, look, look. Pre-programmed with sounds and settings that let you fine-tune what the fish hears. Gosh, what I bite. Whether you're matching the hatch. Look at that thing. Presenting something new or just trying to dial up the excitement when you found a school. The HydroWave provokes for extra bites. <laughs> 